Good morning. We're uh, going to look mainly at Mark chapter 12, 1 through 27 this morning. Uh, on the Bible Gateway, it's also got Old Testament reading every day, and today we'll be reading from Deuteronomy 10 through 12. And, and this is, um, Deuteronomy 10 starts with God saying to Moses, carve another set of stones, and, and, Mo and Moses does. He carves a second set of stones, the tablets for the Ten Commandments, goes back up on the mountain and God again writes the Ten Commandments on these stone tablets and and Moses has made uh, the Ark of the Covenant a, a chest a cabinet you know a, a box that these tablets will be put in and I start with this because it's a reminder that you know it, as God led the people out of slavery and captivity in Egypt you know he gave them commands and, and he, he was leading them and guiding them and and they disobeyed and god was upset by that moses was upset by that as well but god didn't say you know you're done you know i led you out of captivity and i've been doing this and if you, if, you know no god gave them right here a second chance already you know with the ten commandments to giving them the second time and and it's just a reminder to us of the second chances that we continually get from god and and so we, we uh, hear Jesus today uh, teaching in parables. Two of the parables, you know, a man planted a vineyard, put a fence around it. You know, very similar to Isaiah 5, when the prophet is, you know, talking, you know, through God's words to the people that, you know, this is what God has done. You know, he's put, he's taken you, his, his chosen people, and he's tried to protect you from, the evils of the world from all of this outside corruption and you know it doesn't do any good you know and then uh, and when God comes again when the messengers come when the prophets come what happens the people reject them and um, you know and, and then he and Jesus quotes you know the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and 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 then he tells the second parable um, well, it says, you know, they realize that Jesus told this parable against them. Well, yeah, the, the, because the, the religious leaders of the day were, they were rejecting Jesus. They had rejected other prophets, and, and they realized this, the religious leaders do. And so then, you know, they wanted to arrest him, but they were still afraid. And this is, you know, during Holy Week again, after the, the Palm Sunday parade then. And, and so then some others come. Pharisees and Herodians together, and, and we had this parable back in Matthew as well, and uh, they talk about you know paying taxes and to Caesar, and um, it's it's all of those things that are tied together, but within this within this time when they come, you know they say, teacher, we know that you are sincere or a man of integrity, that you show no partiality, that you are open, that. You know, it doesn't matter who somebody is or what's wrong with them or you are welcoming for all people, you know. And, and you know, so they're, they're testing Jesus and it, it just continually, you know, battering him and badgering him um, because they see in him his righteousness, but they don't want to accept it. Yeah, and this is, a, this is a problem, you know. And so then they test him with this, with this idea of, you know, the, the man who marries and he's got brothers and you know, ended up all seven brothers marry this woman. You know, it's just, uh, it's into that same type of deal with, you know, that, you know, they're just not understanding God's openness, they're not understanding God's godliness in all those things. And, you know, and Jesus says, the last thing we would read today is that, you know, God is, not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. And, uh, and it's just a reminder to us that, that, that God doesn't give up on us and that when this life on this earth ends, you know, it isn't the end for those who love God, for those who accept Jesus. There is, there is more to come. And, and all of those promises from God. And... Uh, I'm going to go back to that parable of the the vineyard again. You know when they, you know they they send all of these you know the messengers and then they send the son and they they kill the son and you know Jesus is telling the parable and 
Mark's got Mark and Luke. Jesus tells the parable differently. You know, he says he says they seized the son, killed him, threw him out of the vineyard. What do you think the owner will do? And Jesus says he will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. This is different than in Matthew's gospel. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus asked the question. So they, you know, he says they seized him, killed him, drew him out of the vineyard. What do you think the owner of vineyard will, will do? And then Matthew says they replied, you know, so, you know, in Matthew's gospel, the Pharisees, those who kick, those who kill the son, proclaim uh, their own expulsion from the kingdom, their own death, their own refusal from God, you know, and, you know, their own punishment, so to speak, so to say that way. Mark and Mark and Luke's gospel, as I said, you know, Jesus just proclaims this, you know, that the owner will come and and seek his vengeance. And and there's a difference in, you know, in Jesus saying that to them and in the Pharisees realizing it for themselves and, you know, they're, they're, they're the ones that say that, you know, that, you know, that they will be, you know, basically deserving of death and the, the owner will come and do that. And... and and I think we need to re realize that about God is that if we reject God, I mean, God, God will reject us. I mean, that's, you know, it's a, it's a hard fact. It's a hard thing to say that, you know, if we reject God, this, this God of the old, the old Testament credo who is merciful and gracious and slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and grace, I mean, it's, you know, as I said to begin with, in Deuteronomy, you know, he's giving the Ten Commandments a second time. And do the Israelites continue to follow and continue to believe? No. And even in Jesus' day then, you know, the people come and say, well, what must I do? What must I do? What must I do? And, you know, Jesus says, you know, follow the Ten Commandments. And, and they can't do that. And all through the Old Testament as well, as as they would come to a new land. God would say, you know, don't take on the characteristics of these people. And what would happen? They wouldn't listen to God. And and here in, in Mark's gospel again, you know, they're coming to Jesus and they're asking, what must we do? And so Jesus is telling them, this is what you got to do. You have to accept the Son of God. You have to accept the prophets that God sends. You know, you've been killing the prophets. I mean, he doesn't say, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you know, I weep for you here. Um, but Jesus is in effect saying to the Pharisees that, you know, the Jewish community, you, you stiff necked people, he doesn't use those words right here either, but, but we know in other texts in the Bible that, that God refers to people who won't hear, people who won't listen, people who won't see, people who won't accept as stiff necked. And have you ever tried to change someone's opinion? Somebody believes something and it's, you know, they, they say that two plus two is five. Well, you can take two apples and two apples and show them how many apples you got. You got four. But if they believe in their head that they're right, you know, you, you can't change their minds even with the facts. And this is what Jesus is saying to these people. You know, you have rejected God's prophets over and over and over again. And now God has sent his son. And if you reject his son... What's going to happen? Well, Jesus says, God will come and he will reject you as well. You know, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and that's Jesus. I mean, these religious leaders of the day, the, the, so many people in the world today yet don't accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And this is what we need to do. We need to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. We need to give God the credit that is due to God of being this gracious and merciful God who forgives our sins, who welcomes us back into the kingdom, who gives us second chances over and over and over again. And, and it re brings to mind a, a, a story in a, a book of Max Lucado, Lucado, I never remember how to say his name, that he went golfing and with the mulligans. And I told that story before. And, you know, you hit the ball and it's a, if you can't play it, well, take a mulligan, don't count that one. And that's God over and over and over again for us, you know. But yet, with, with Jesus going on into this text of where we finish up, you know, kind of this 
Um, give to Caesar what is Caesar and give to God what is God's. It's hard to look and to say, what really is God's? What do I have that really is God's? What do I need to be thankful to God for? You know, I mean, think about it. Ponder that for, for a while. What, what is it that we need to give and to be thankful to God for? And so, you know, um, they come to Jesus and they say, we know you are a man of integrity, showing no partiality. And this is a wonderful description of God. You know, God is a God of integrity. He shows no partiality. He, he forgives and welcomes all who come to him that way. And just like the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Herodians, we should be amazed at the amount of love, at the amount of grace, at the patience that God has with us. And just remember always that God is the God of living, not the God of the dead. So as you live today, may you rejoice in his love and blessing and just be thankful for everything that you've got because it's all a gift of God.